Hi everyone, it's Sam, back with another bullet journal video. This week I'm sharing my full process from the blank page to the stunning cover art page featuring these three beautiful flamingos walking along a beach setting. So let's get started. So I actually did this sitting in the garden because British summertime finally decided to make an appearance and we had this beautiful sunny day. So I took my camera set up onto our picnic table. I felt my June cover page should at least represent a sunny summertime theme and it came to me the idea of flamingos walking along a beachfront. I looked at some photos of flamingos for reference and then really just got started. Flamingos have such a distinctive silhouette of the S-shaped neck like a swan with that angled beak and that beautiful round body and long, long legs. I'm using my 2H pencil, which means it is very light in colour, so it's not as easy for you guys to see. But I will be going in with my mechanical pencil when I put in the more defined lines. It's always a good idea when you're doing a composition to work in the rule of odd numbers. So I chose to do three flamingos walking across the scene. And I'm setting my flamingos in a seaside landscape with palm trees, just the hint of palm trees in the foreground and then a beautiful horizon in the background. I'm drawing my flamingos so that each one has a different pose. I had a lot of fun looking at different reference photos, seeing what the flamingos do with their leg positions, especially when they're resting and they stand stationary with one leg propped up against the other. So I felt I had to include one of those. So now I've finished my rough outline in the 2H pencil, I can go in with my mechanical pencil, which has a 0.5mm nib, so it's very, very fine and it's HB, so I my lines will be darker, you'll be able to see them better on camera. But because it is a fine point, it means I can really go in with those detailed swirls and curls that I like to do when I'm doodling. So they're going to be very stylized flamingos, very much akin to my style. But what I'm saying is, is that the fine pencil really allows you to do whatever you want to do. So I'm using my mechanical pencil to define the characteristic features of the flamingo around the head and the beak. When I'm doing birds, I really do like to make sure that the features of the head and the beak are distinctive and characteristic to the particular type of bird that I'm drawing. And with flamingos, as we've mentioned already, they are incredibly distinctive with that almost boomerang shaped beak and a swan-like neck. I exaggerated the fanning of some of the flamingo feathers and then as you can see some swirls and spirals are stylized on the back of the flamingos just because that's something I really love to do and doodle when I draw creatures or anything really. I just It's just one of the things I like to do. So now you can see the group, the trio of flamingos making their way across the beach front and they really are a beautiful little group. I put in a meandering sort of line for the coastline and water and now I'm just adding in hints of where I want to put the palm leaves. And of course, because this is my cover page, I'm going to put my June calendar and some lettering and that's the perfect spot for it. And there we have the completed drawn composition onto the painting stage now. So I choose to focus on painting the flamingos first. I choose a magenta paint and then a ready orange and mix those two colors with white so that I get a nice ready pink mixture. I'm using my quill brush and randomly applying the palest of those colors just as a base. Then every now and again, you'll see me drop in 
a darker pink or ready orange just to create that variegated look. It makes the bird look more textured as though there are feathers there. If you'd like to know more about the gouache paint set that I'm using, I would definitely recommend looking at the video linked above where I go through the whole swatch and take you through some colour theory with regard to how I mix my colours and achieve those beautiful neutral tones when I need to. So having intensified the colours by popping in the concentrated pink, I'm going on to the background now. So I use two different yellows, a sort of lemon yellow and then a yellow ochre which is more of an orangey yellow and mix up a nice pale mix for the background. I thought a sunset type scene would really complement the flamingos beautifully. So I'm going to mix up a darker orange now for the sunset using that gorgeous ready orange paint colour. While I'm doing that I just want to let you know that I am going to be taking a break and won't be back until the July plan with me so I just thought you should know that. So here I'm mixing up a sort of blue green by adding some Prussian blue to that orangey yellow mix. It gives me a really nice toned down blue green that'll complement the whole scene. For the sandy foreground I'm just going to mix up a sort of stronger orange uh, but a watery mix for that. So the first painted layer is now dry, I can use a finer brush and go in with some details. I mix up a green with the Prussian blue and yellow ochre and use this fine brush to represent the needles of the palm trees. I'm only suggesting the texture of them just in the background so that you get the impression, nothing too detailed. I just really want to make sure that nothing overpowers the flamingos but at the same time you have a setting for them. I vary the tones of the leaves by using a stronger blue mix at times so that you get a slight variation in the colour and it just adds to the interest and it sort of suggests some of those leaves are in shadow. So once the paint's dry we can deepen the tones I do this by using my fine brush and use an actual black colour paint for the birds beaks. Now they're really starting to come to life and look very recognisable as flamingos. I also use this dark colour to carefully outline around the flamingos so that they do stand out against the background in a more obvious way. For the legs I mix up a dark magenta by mixing the pink and the black together and that makes a really pleasing colour. So I use this gorgeous dark pink on the bodies of the flamingos as well, especially around the feathers because it gives you such depth around the feathers, it really suggests layers of feathers and texture. So as I mentioned I'm going to be taking a, a short break from YouTube and we'll come back before the end of the month to do my July plan with me setup because as you can see with this video I only really had time to do the cover art and didn't have time to really do the proper June setup that I usually like to do each month. I would suggest if you want to be able to keep up with when I'm posting and what I'm going to be doing, uh, really consider subscribing to my channel and liking and leaving a comment if you can, because it will help my video get noticed on the YouTube platform and it will help support my channel. So I'm just deepening the tones of the sand with a deeper orange and highlighting the horizon as well with the paint and then that will be it for the paint layer and we'll be going on to those finishing touches with the colour pencils and with our fine liner pens. So I've chosen to use these pencils to help me get a better sense of texture for all those palm leaves because the pencil's nice and sharp it means I can really produce some beautiful fine lines that don't overpower the flamingos in the front because the pencils will never stand out as much as the paint or a pen ink would. 
layering the textures like this end up giving you a more realistic, interesting look to those palm leaves. I found the colour pencils were really useful and created a beautiful effect when I painted and drew the magnolia tree weekly spread that is linked above. So now I'm just using the colour pencils, this time in pink, to deepen some of those tones and just have a bit of fun really with shading. So now I'm just going to use a nice blue watercolour pencil to define the horizon and some of those waves in the distance and do a little bit of shading for the pool of water in the foreground. And then we'll go on to our doodles. So I use two fine liner pens for the doodling, one in pink and the other in black. You'll see all the materials are linked in the description below. I can just make out the pencil doodling that I had done and I'm going over it with the pink and the black just to define some of those areas and it will really enhance the flamingo's appearance, make them look more stylized and stand out in the unique way that I really want them to do. The doodling is always my most favourite part to do whenever I create a spread or a piece of work. It really is where I feel I express myself the most, more freely and more individually. So I hope you're enjoying this video. I've only been doing them since February and I have already had such lovely feedback from people and I do intend to continue even though I'm taking a bit of a break for right now. But do leave me feedback, do let me know if there's anything you would like to see and hopefully we get to spend a lot more time together for the remainder of the year We're doing beautiful monthly spreads and more Bujo beauty artwork. If you want to find us elsewhere on the web then obviously take a look in the video description and you'll find my social media links to my Insta page and Facebook and also to my Etsy shop where a lot of the artwork does appear in the form of stationery and stickers which you might find really pleasing and a nice purchase for you so do check that out. Anyway, take care and I will see you back for the July monthly setup in a few weeks time. Bye for now.